a city where shadows hide more than secrets. Two detectives step out of the fog, not to solve crimes, but to crack business cases. We dig into the numbers, dissect the strategy, and shine a light on what needs fixing. Welcome to Business Noir, where every episode is a new case, and every case has a story. Welcome to Two Shadows of Business. In this podcast, we're going to analyze different real case scenarios every week and help you go through it, help you uh, help a lot of people to start their business, uh, follow new different paths and start over a new, totally different career. In this podcast, I'm with my, with my partner, Nico, and we will be checking these cases together. I will uh, let Nico introduce himself. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm Nico, I'm from Spain, I'm from Barcelona, and I've been in Poland uh, for around four years, and uh, my background is in visual arts. Uh, I created multiple projects. I got studies in, um, in production, in film production, in advertisement, and I've been dealing with projects for almost like 20 years and some time ago I met with Borja now he's introduced himself <laughs> so thank you Borja for introducing me okay so my name is Borja I come from Spain as well uh, my background um, I'm a delivery manager I've been a delivery manager for big companies so basically what I've been doing is strategic leadership and coaching in these different companies and now I want to use my expertise to help other people to set their projects from ground and uh, help them to take them to the to the next level. I think that with no further ado, we can start with Let's go for today's it. case. So today's case, we have uh, Anna's case. Anya is a friend of us, and she wants to create a, a coffee place here in Krakow. She wants to start from zero. She's an experienced barista. And she wants to create a spot that will deliver like high quality coffee, like very specific, uh, like coffee for, for connoisseurs of coffee, not just whatever random coffee, but mm -hmm. something that, that people will enjoy a lot and, and, you know, high quality coffee in general. Um, I guess this, uh, she's uh, not an investor. She's, uh, she's not an investor, but she, she wants to work there. She, she has the idea and she has the skills, she has the knowledge, but she's not an investor. Okay. So let's, uh, if you agree, let's start with an overview of the, let's say, yeah, uh, the whole project. Uh -huh. Let's say she's a solo barista. Uh -huh. She doesn't have any partner. Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah, any business partner there? She wants to do it by herself. Correct. Um, she wants to do it in Krakow. Yes. In um, which area? Do you know more or less the area that she wants? Center to of Krakow, like Center basically Krakow. the old town, which is probably the most touristic and where all the people is is passing by. So. Okay. Uh, so I guess the kinds of clients is really like rich. Let's say from one. Who wants to go for a coffee when before work, or just the other one who exactly, wants to have exactly exactly like from from people that just pass by like tourists till the people that work around mm, okay or people that go exclusively to this place like they know the place and they like but you told me that she wants to do it like more like exclusive cafe no yeah okay. that's the idea that's the idea what's the difference between let's say uh, exclusive cafe and a normal coffee shop. Is the price, but also the way that she is doing it, I guess? I guess that the, the experience. The experience. Like, um, the experience for the customer. Exactly. Yeah, like okay. she, she wants to sell a whole experience uh, that includes the, not only the product, but as well the way that she delivers the product. Like a high quality product delivered by a specialist that knows what she's doing. So a whole experience. Okay, it. so if you uh, you think we, we can start with the background, her yep. background, let's say 
the role right now she will be like a owner mm -hmm. but also worker no exactly a worker okay um mm -hmm. let's say the her education is a professional barista yes right she i think that she was in a, in competition she was a, ah. a jury in a barista competition so she knows what she's doing <laughs> also I, i think it's, it could be a really cool hook right yeah. for the audience like if she won a competition so she is a professional yeah. no this one in that she should sell definitely the, the fact that she is a connoisseur of the product like she, she's not a random person that wants to open a cafe yeah she is she knows what she's doing right definitely. because it happens a lot right i mean i i guess we we saw it in our lives especially in spain because in spain we have a lot of uh, bars it's like every <laughs> everybody wants to open a bar yeah, in spain yeah. everybody i think they need and they they think they can open a bar yeah 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 and it's like what no no no, no, no. Like, then then you, there is a lot of failure exactly and you, yeah. you need a professional behind behind yeah. the bar i would say yeah yeah, yeah. okay so in, the, in that case that's the thing like the she knows she She's been working as a, you know, bartender many years, and she not only that, but as well, like she's a professional barista. So she's um, okay. And how old is she? You know, you remember? I don't know, twenty something. Twenty something. Okay, 20 -something. that's that's really cool because at the end is something that is uh, very very engaging actually yeah because yeah. she has the energy yeah right she she wants to wants to do it she's her own boss yeah you know, let's say exactly okay um the other question i have uh, let's say for example motivation for change what's her motivation motivation for change to my understanding is that she is looking to be her own boss and stop being a under somebody else's payroll, but not only as well. She is uh, passionate about coffee and she wants to create this spot. Okay, I guess, so she has a lot of, um, she's, I think, I think it's the perfect, the perfect uh, owner, I will say, yeah. for, for having a, a cafe. Because yep. you have to spend a lot of time. Yeah, you need to be passionate about that. Yeah, right. You need to like it, and I think that she likes it. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. So what we can start? We can. I mean, oh, I have to say that we have first uh, the brainstorming at the beginning. This is how it's going to be brainstorming, and then after that we are going to improvise. So we're trying to have improvisation with yeah. everything, but also we have to. It's a really difficult. Uh, not difficult, I will say extensive um, analyze, uh, analysis of the, of, of, the, of the business. So we have like a small, let's say a small uh, guide or like schedule that we, we want to follow just to not forget anything. But I have to, I, I want to insist that this is going to be mostly improvising uh, what we're going to do and we, because we want to try, we want to try to do as a client will be crossing the door in, 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 in our business, I would say, I want to do this. And you have to improvise. You have to improvise as an yeah. as, as analyzer, right? And then you have to ask questions and you have to solve these questions. And we thought it would be a really good idea if we can kind of like trans, uh, transform this podcast in something like this. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, more information that we need about her? No, I think that we have like the basic information is that we have the place, we have what, we have the whys. Uh, I guess that now we can start like looking into what kind of uh, clientele, what will be like the, the main obstacles of this business how to overcome these obstacles yeah. uh, and, and, you know, the money that, that she may need and so on. Okay. So I think that we can, we can go, Perfect. we Let's can start go. going in that direction, right? So if you, what do you think, Nico, if we go for the, like, barrier of entrance to the business? The barrier for the entrance is, uh, well, the first is money. First one is money. And the other one is identify the potential client, the perfect client, I would say. Yeah. Say like, which, the client, which, uh, and most also important is like, this client exists in Krakow, in the center, or yeah. exists in other place? Okay, so let, let's analyze the product. Like, we're selling coffee 
but not only coffee, an experience, uh, an experience with a high quality coffee. So it's something, I guess, that the client that we are looking for, like, let's put it in the, in the skin of who can buy this. Somebody that goes to the place specifically because I have, I have listened about this place or I have seen in social media or something and I really want to try this special coffee mm. or I want to bring somebody, you know, I'm inviting a friend for a cafe and I want to go to this like super chic exclusive place that is like so nice and we can have this conversation, you know, it's this kind of client. I, I think that I will focus much more in this kind of client than in the like irregular bystander, like, yeah. you know, like whoever is passing by, it's gonna, it's gonna be okay with this coffee or another other or whichever other coffee. But I think that, that the client that we're looking at is somebody that really likes this place, that wants to get this experience or, you know, have a chill afternoon with a very good coffee, invite a friend and, you know, something like that. Yeah, because the coffee has to be the main product on the... So, because there are also a lot of, uh, a lot of bars and, and cafes yeah. that they are also serving different stuff, like breakfast or like... Uh, on, or this alcohol beverage and stuff. Exactly. So it's kind of, let's say it's kind of like transforming the idea of the wine place into a cafe. Mm -hmm. you know, like people who want to follow this. Okay, I would say like the client who likes to have this experience, uh, this, let's say, I want to spend, because obviously this is the other thing, it's just the price of the coffee. Yeah. Because here in Poland, the coffee is, is expensive. It's expensive. Let's say like four euros sometimes, four or five euros yeah. a coffee. Yeah. It's really expensive. So I guess if you add even more an experience, the price has to be even bigger. Yeah. Okay. So I think that we can maybe like separate the products in three three categories. Like the let's say regular stuff can have a normal price that can be like kind of the hook like you know typical americano latte yeah all that stuff it can be like as a regular i don't know like the the regular craco price that it's as you mentioned like four to six euro something like that yeah and then have a second category that is like more special coffee like coffee from special places or coffee prepared in a special machine. And that should cost, you know, in this product, I think that the margin should be bigger. You're going to yeah. sell a lot less of this, but that's going to be the differentiation. So the first product can be the hook, the other the differentiation in which you're going to get the margin. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe having a third product that it's like a, kind of like a high ticket product, like something like, like very exclusive, more expensive, that you know that you're not gonna sell a lot of that, but still it, it can be like part of your, you know, Instagram promotion, whatever, you know what I mean? Like yeah. categorizing these three things in the end, you're gonna use the normal coffee to get the hook. Somebody's gonna go there like, oh, it's an Americano, normal coffee. But then you see the menu and you see like, oh, they have this special, coffee brought from Colombia that smells like watermelon and it's been <laughs> brewed in like 4,000 atmospheres of pressure. And it's, it's you yeah. know, like this kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I think that that, that can be a, a, an interesting strategy. So still attract clients because in the end, once that you set up the business, the, the expenses, the expenses per month are not gonna be very high. Mm. What do you, I mean, depends. Because it depends. It, like, it depends the place also. But I mean, like, it's going to be like renting supplies, but the, we are not talking about alcohol. But stuff. Stuff. Is she going to work by herself? She's going to work at the beginning. I think that she should work by herself. So the place is not going to be very big. It's going to be a small place. Okay. Yeah. And so, I yeah. think that she should work by herself uh, until business because yeah. that's the thing we go back to the first point like we start in a point that we don't have a lot of money to start so we need to find uh, financing yeah and the best way to start is like she she has the skills so the best way to start this business if you have the skills is to do yourself everything also talking about like um, um talking about the the funding and everything 
Uh, there's also a lot of uh, companies, coffee companies and stuff, at least I think in Spain, I, I think here also, that they can also provide you with machines and stuff, like they are kind of like mm -hmm. somehow um, funding you, but also promoting you, you know, like you yeah. know, I mean, sponsoring actually. Sponsoring. Some, somehow. So, okay, so now we have a little bit like the the price tag. We have a, we, we didn't go like, through price, but we have a pricing strategy, like the products, like this kind of like three tiers of products, right? Yeah, that as you said, yeah. We got that. Now, let's go to the to the funding and the, like, let's continue with the with the entry barriers, right? Because we, I think that we can agree that the, the clientele is there. So there is, I think that in Krakow, there is... There is potential. There, there is potential, potential of this there business. Totally, yeah. Krakow is a place that now, like, there is a lot of money, a lot of, like, people, It's, it's wealthy in Krakow, and this kind of product is something that we see every day, that it's, it sells. Uh, we know more or less the, the tier of the products. Now, about what we need. We need the, the place. The place is very important yeah. in a bar. Yeah. It's very important. Um, the place is, has to be like, because I'm a little bit, I don't know, I'm doubting a little bit about the place, if it will be in the center of the best strategy or another place more connected with, let's say, authenticity of Krakow. That would be like Kazimierz. Kazimierz. Kazimierz is the is the the old one of the oldest, no, like yeah. the Jewish Jewish quarter, and uh, the, but there is a lot of people there, uh, especially at night. Yeah, it's like the yeah, like the trendy neighborhood. I would say. Mm -hmm. mm. By flow of people, the center is probably the neighborhood with most flow of people. But in Krakow, I think that the best places will be either like the center of Kashimis because the rest of the city is basically a dormitory. Yeah, unless you want to work with company, with big corporation, I mean, uh, around with corporations. Yeah, but is it the target? Because in the end, you know, big corporation, mm, the, no. the guy, like, yeah, that's the thing, like this kind of people, they want like the takeaway coffee, whatever. And normally even the, they have their own coffee in the offices and whatever. Yeah. So I don't think that this is exactly the, the people that we are targeting. We're targeting somebody that goes to the place specifically for the experience. Yeah. So it's better to be, yeah, it's better, yeah. Like, that makes uh, more sense. Yeah, yeah. Right. Somebody that wants to go on a date and want to, you know, surprise the, their partner with something high quality, that can be like the kind of target like Yeah, something yeah. special, something, something me special. memorable. Yeah, so it's better in the center. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sounds good. So okay, we have the space. We yeah. have the place. The center in the center. I think that the cost of a small local like fifteen twenty square meters. Come, let me check. Yeah, I think that it's going to be like around one thousand euro per month. In okay euros. Like 1,200 euros per month. Um, okay, I'm gonna note it down. Bum, bum. And then we will need to think about the machinery, because yeah. the coffee machines. Uh, I will need to check because I, from the, we, we have an interview with Anna. And I have my notes in my notebook, so, um, so it's a little bit old school. Yeah, this is also another thing that we want to um, say is we previously, if we can have the chance, we try to make an interview first with the person uh, by email or like by um, in person if it's possible. And we also invite you, if you have an idea, if you want to have uh, our analysis or just to know a little bit more about what what you can do what you're gonna do you can send us uh, a message or just yeah. put in contact with us so yeah cool. so yeah basically uh, machinery we say like the the cost of the place is around like yeah 1200 euro i check it in swati in poland they have swati it's around 5000 swati and about the machines uh, we said that it will cost around uh, another 10,000 swati. So it's 2,000 euros, 2,500 euros. Nice machines. Yeah. 
Okay, this is, uh, I guess, this is the uh, second hand or something like that machine? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I think that one of the things that, that you should do is to try to find a way to reduce cost in the machines mm -hmm. by either finding like any kind of gold deal in the second hand or as you said, like asking coffee providers I think I think this uh, sometimes happens. Sometimes it happens. I mean, we miss opportunities because we don't we don't ask. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't say it's one hundred percent sure, but sometimes we have to ask. Some, some. Uh, totally. Like I think that one one first step that I would advise Anna to do is to write an email to different coffee providers, especially local providers, and explain her business idea. And ask, like, I, I need this this kind of machine. Because uh, there is a one place really close to my, from the place I live that I go quite often because the coffee is really good. Uh -huh. It's not an experience. It's just okay. like, <laughs> like normal coffee. And the price is decent and the price is really quiet so I can go with my computer and work there. And they have this really amazing machine that is automatic, actually. Yeah. They put the grains there. And they, you know, they do this stuff. And I sometimes I see the guy, the guy from the from the, from the company. Mm -hmm. He's going there to check and just to kind of make tutorials or something like that to yeah. the workers. And probably the the company is also involved. Yeah. No, that will be like a first step because the problem, like we we the, the starting point is like we don't have money. Okay, we we're, we're gonna yeah. say that we start okay. from zero. So we need to find the funding, especially for the for the first months, because we need to pay a rent, we will need to pay probably a deposit to pay the, the place, yeah. plus the machine, plus the glasses, whatever we need, like supplies and so on. Yeah, like like forks and blah, this kind of stuff. And so let's, let's say like we said that the machine is gonna be around 2000, we can probably spend another 2,000 in any other material, so it's 5,000 yeah. euros only to entry, plus another 1,000 for the renting, plus another 1,000 for the deposit. So in the first month alone, before even like getting any money in, we are already spending it's like 7,000 euros. No, it's 9,000. 9, 9,000 9, euros. So first thing that we need to find is how to reduce that, because uh, what most of the people will do is to go to the bank and get a loan to yeah. get the uh, to get the material, which is fine if you don't have any other option. But as you said, like many people don't get opportunities because they don't go for them. So before going to the bank, the bank is always going to be there, and the bank is always going to be you know an option. Yeah. But yeah. I think that what you just said. Prepare an email and go to all the coffee providers of the city or things that are related to coffee. Say, I need this money for this machine. Is there any way that you can donate some part? You can donate a machine. Maybe somebody has this machine and can give it at a you know, very good price. Or, you know, there is always like, that will be like the first thing to do because if she will get a loan, then that means that the monthly expenses are going to get higher for quite a long time. Yeah. And that will eat on the benefit. Let, let's, let's say like, um, because you always have like this, uh, I like about this, uh, you go like extreme. And I think uh -huh. it's a really good exercise to yeah. do it in, in, in your life and on your business and everything. Let's say, for example, that we have nothing okay mm -hmm. and we want to start we are, we don't have any friends we don't have any family we can just but we want to start something yeah and i'm a professional barista yeah let's say okay um i would say um, try to buy a machine work let's say work, you have a work a job somewhere yeah. you know like you saving money yeah two or three months and you can have like a portable let's say coffee place coffee mm -hmm. stuff right yeah but you invest a lot of time and things in social media yeah and you go and you ask to festivals you ask to uh, mm -hmm. parties or even coffee even bars or yeah. whatever because there's plenty of places like this in Krakow mm -hmm. and you ask can I be your partner let's say yeah you don't need to you didn't, I, I can give you a commission, for example, of everything that I sell, or I get 
I have to pay something to uh, yeah. to enter or something like that. And I can just create my own persona, uh -huh. digital persona, and just digital reputation. Like I'm a professional, I'm going there, investing a lot of time in treating well people, getting yeah. know. And then after that, you have money, you will have reputation, your social media will burn up. Yeah. And then just, you can have even, um, because one of the things, one of the benefits I think about being yourself who is selling this is it doesn't matter what you're going to do, mm -hmm. people will follow you. Yeah. If you're good in social media and so on, yes. The thing is like, uh, like this is what you're saying is just to go with a kind of this approach, like a minimal viable product. Totally minimal, yeah. Um, I think that it can be a good strategy. It depends on the on the time span that you want to have the business yeah. up and running. Because that's true. If time is not a constriction, that can be a creative way instead of uh, needing the place plus the machinery. You just need like a smaller machine and some and, and well, you put them wheels <laughs> and yeah. you move it around. Yeah. And with that, you try to collect money and even like you can do it as a as a social media project like kind of like you know my my instagram page is like help me to reach my dream my dream is to open this cafe for this reason i'm going around the city uh, selling my awesome coffee like one type of coffee that it's very good and you can reduce cost by just buying one so you can try like very good coffee for very affordable place and I'm going to be in this place, in this other place, in this concert, in this area. Yeah. Today I'm going to this area that there are like businesses and so on. And always like you put everywhere, like make very clear that whatever you buy to me, it's to reach my dream. It's not yeah. like, so I think that this can be a very interesting strategy because that will boost a lot of your digital persona as you said, yeah. and as well, it can be a way to collect money to start. And because in the end, it's something that, that works in, in terms of coaching, right? Like when you involve, engage people in your project. So if, if you're doing this and you're selling this kind of coffee and I buy coffee to you, yeah. when you open, I will, be, I will feel part of your business. I will feel like, you know, I contributed. So automatically I'm engaged and probably I will visit you. So I think that it's a fantastic idea. If you have nothing, and you don't have the money to start in a place, you can start smaller and, and try to go like this. So this is, I would say, extreme, no? yeah, extreme yeah. case, like you don't have any, but normally people have like family, friends, and also they mm -hmm. were saving some money. So yeah. Let's say you have some income. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but not enough to have like 10,000 euros, yeah. right? Okay, instead of having a space like a big space, like this in the center, how, what you can have, let's say, for example, yeah. like a food truck? Food truck or this like very small place that is only a window, like reduce it a lot, but then the experience is not going to be the same. And that food truck? Yeah, the experience is gone. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I, I guess that for this kind of business, I think that it's still like I will I will aim to have the the place. If it cannot be in the center, it will need to be in an, in a neighborhood. Maybe a yeah, totally true. An emerging neighborhood. Yeah, totally in, true. Instead of going to the center, obviously that's the target. Yeah. But if if you cannot, let's say let's say like in the end you're gonna need this money to start and. But you need to reduce either from one place or the other. If you don't manage to reduce from the machine, if you are forced to reduce from the place, then the second option would be to find an emerging neighborhood, yeah. some place that make a study of the neighborhoods in the city and see, okay, where is the, the neighborhood that is growing a lot? Um, in that case, for example, uh, in, in Krakow, I don't know which neighborhood would be that, like maybe Zawoce, but Zawoce is expensive as well. It's, I think that Zawoce can be as expensive as the center. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, because or it's kind of like a... Or uh, yeah. that was... Podguje. Podguje. Neighborhoods that 
since the the center is expanding, neighborhoods that are getting like a little bit eaten by the center, but still they're in a good range of price. Yeah. Then you will have to increase your visibility because the good point of being in the center is that you are in the middle of everything. Even though if you do nothing, people will see you. Yeah. But if suddenly you move to a neighborhood, then you will need to make sure that you are extremely active when it comes to to social media or visibility. If you cannot spend money on physical stuff, let's say, or plays or something like that, invest your time in social media yep. instead of in learning. Yeah, yeah. In learning how to do that and grow. Like yeah, exactly. But in the end, this is what you're going to have, right? Time. So we have already like mm. the, the entry barriers. We know them. Like the supplier is not a problem, but the machine, the machinery is a problem and the place is a problem. But we, we know how to, let's say, we have developed some strategies to reduce that. So yeah. that's good. Now, uh, Other other way to get funding, it's I mean like this is sometimes is is obvious but people don't do it and it's like go to wherever like your your local government is and ask for help. There are like every country mm. gives help to entrepreneurs, so maybe there is something that she can use any kind of help like from the government normally they're like this kind of loans without interest or even sometimes they give you straight away money to start your business under certain circumstances so the one of the first things that i will advise anybody to do if you are thinking about opening a business go to your uh, see your government your city and try to find out what helps you can get because probably there is some help that you can get and that will be extremely useful if, if your government or your city gives you straight like 1000 euro to start okay it's not a lot but it's but you can buy a lot of stuff with that yeah, it can it can cover and actually if you combine all these strategies then probably you can start your business in a much more relaxed way yeah because one of the things is about this is about how can you be relaxed while doing these, these yeah. things because you're putting a lot of risk, right? Exactly. And I think it's minimizing this, the risks is when you can have better, I mean, you, could, you will have better sleep, you yeah. will have better face to the clients, yeah, yeah. you will be more capable to do really good experience. Because yeah. if and, not, and take better decisions because if you're in fear, totally. you're, you're going to take impulsive decisions. But yeah, definitely, like this will help people to get a, a better state of mind if you break the problem in small parts and then try to minimize like okay we see what is the worst case scenario that is what we see like we go to the center we pay that the, we need to pay the full cost of the machine and we don't have any help and even even more extreme cases even if we don't have this money as you said we can reduce to the project of going with the little coffee mobile and and selling yeah uh, So then, you know, there is always a smaller bit to attack. And when you combine all of this, you will see like, you can reduce a lot the, 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 the experience and it, it can be even like easier than you thought it would be. Maybe not exactly the way that you thought because I guess that in business as well, you need to be flexible, yeah. especially if you don't have infinite resources. And maybe to get from the point A to the point B, you need to pass make up a little round and go to the to the point D and C first and then to end up in point B. But it's it's part of the experience and it's part of the of the growth and just being creative, right? Yeah, it's totally true because it's one of the things I like to insist all the time. It's just about like I mean not everyone is a super business owner mm -hmm. that knows all the strategies on all the marketing trends and no i mean we need to improvise even mm -hmm. if you have experience you don't know what's going to happen yeah. and i think it is something that all the owners you know, of a business they should aware be aware of that we are not superheroes that are going to solve one movement and we're going to solve everything all yeah. the problems sometimes we fail sometimes we struggle with some mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. And I think this is important for you to understand yep. that sometimes you need to stop. Sometimes you need to change. Yep. Sometimes you need to say, this is not, it's not going good. Yep. Let's rethink about something. Yeah, like take a step back. And yeah, this, this, totally. this is the, the typical, 
uh, you know the agile uh, methodology in which basically yeah. whatever project is it's broken down in yeah. small sprints and you work in something you put it to the public you check how if it's good bad you make modifications you go back and so on so and you break a big problems yeah. in in small chunks and then you are adapting your product to your to your market and this is the way this is and way the way to go feedback at the sprint the exactly. sprints never end exactly you have always one sprint more Yeah. to do because you have to fix what what you had at the exactly end. so if you if we are able to to transmit this mentality to to the owner yeah i think that will be a success absolutely absolutely let's go okay so what is next we have the possible uh, client we have the breakdown of costs more or less let's talk about suppliers Suppliers, okay. Suppliers, okay. Because we have uh, coffee, which is the most important thing, uh -huh. right? For the experience, but also you have more suppliers. I think you need to. Um, they yeah. need to give you more stuff. Exactly. Right. Let's say, for my in my experience in bars and cafes and cafes and something like that, you need uh, non-alcoholic beverage. Yeah. Because alcohol licenses are really expensive. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's very really expensive. I mean, I guess everywhere. Yeah. Um, so. This is out of the equation right now. Yep. For now, I guess she will she will she will need it at some point mm -hmm. because I think she was telling something about the doing some cocktails or something like that. Yeah, but I think that that as you said is is uh, stage two. It's no? smart to start reducing costs as alcohol is not the main business. It's better to start without alcohol, and once that the business is on track, go for the alcohol. So you have, we, we have, let's say, um, coffee. We have non beverage, no, no, non alcoholic non, non -alcoholic beverage. Non alcoholic beverage. We, we need dairy products, dairy yeah. product like milk on this kind of different Old thousands milk, of milk, almond <laughs> milk, whatever milk, all yeah. the milk, all the milks, even sometimes cow milk. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. and uh, I guess if she wants to do only coffee. That's it. Yeah, like sugar, all these uh, yeah. like mm, napkins or something like this. Like yeah. uh, if at some point can be as well like any kind of like sweet stuff, like because you don't need kitchen for you know like a croissant or cake. Well, yeah, but I guess. I, I remember when I was long ago. I was working in a in a in a in a, in a really fancy restaurant, and these people they used to buy to a professional, really really good one. Um, let's say, um, uh, the, I don't know, is a cook who is making only sweets. I don't yeah, know. like a, a, a like a, from a bakery, like yeah, a, from yeah. my bakery. But it was like really like really yeah. good, and they were buying this this stuff from these people. And you don't need didn't even need you need a kitchen. This is this is my thought exactly. If I were Anna, what I will do if I want to offer sweets, just go and speak with any bakery from Krakow and say I will need like I don't know what five cakes per day. Yeah. Every day, special price. A special price, and also you kind of. Yeah. But also, I think it's really interesting because not only for the clients is an experience, mm -hmm. I think. You could, you could use your own um, philosophy to engage other companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's say you're going to be part of a really good experience. Come yeah, and yeah. come with me. And give me more discount. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I will promote your place because yeah. I will be selling your cakes. Yeah. And then I will make sure that everybody knows that your cakes are from your bakery. And if they want more, they can go like two streets down. Like this is the typical thing. Like you go to the place. Oh, this maracuya cake is amazing. Oh, you like it. You want more? There is this bakery. I buy the the cakes there. They have this and like another hundred. If you have a special events, you can just go there. You say, "Come from my side," yeah. and they will give you a five percent discount. So Stuff like this. Like, yeah. and I think that you know, having these kind of business networks that are related can be very, very beneficial. So again, as you said, if you don't ask, you never know. But definitely, will ask. Yeah, exactly. Especially with new bakeries that they will need, they will be looking for this kind of promotion because probably. If you go to a bakery that is already like settled, no, but if you go to somebody that is starting new like you, that would be like a 
perfect combination because it's a win-win situation. Totally, because you both need something. Yeah. And you can kind of like, like good, look at us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like we do. Yeah. Look at us. Okay, we have the, the suppliers and everything. The, the pricing strategy, we talk about like having like three products, three different products, right? Uh, I guess the experience is based on what exactly? In the product, but also in the how she serves these kind of things. Yeah. Because she, I think she told like she wants to spend time with, with the client. Yeah, like the idea is that the basically the experience it's not only you know you get there you get your coffee like because you know many many places in Krakow uh, the owners are not there so whoever is working is just a person that is hired and they are doing their job but they don't care that much about your experience they're like oh you want a coffee you, you get your coffee end of the story yeah. but part of the experience that she wants to sell is like to speak with the people okay and what do you like and and then like maybe get to know what is the the kind of taste of these people and get them special coffee for them yeah so kind of engage in this kind of conversation explain them how oh, this coffee is made this way again not only here's your latte it's more like these beans come from this place it's made with this pressure because this pressure makes like you know it's kind of like i will explain you what is happening and this is the experience what do you think if we can talk about the risks of this uh, kind of business let's say in based on experience based on okay on let's let's pick risks So I guess again, like ballparking here, the first risk will will be like not having enough clients, or having yeah, having you you have to spend a lot of time with clients every time yeah, and you're alone yeah right, and we are talking about small plays, so that means that you cannot host like a lot of clients at the same time. How many clients? Yeah. Well, this is another story because it's a, we, we, we're going to first go with the risk because I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm okay. thinking all the time. Okay, this is one of the risks, right? Mm -hmm. The other risk will be like the price. Yeah. It's not really for everyone. Yeah. Because let's say um, a normal coffee costs around, let's say, Americano. Yeah. Is what I drink. Basically. Yeah, me too. Uh, costs sometimes 15 what it is. Uh -huh. which is basically four or five euros. Yes. Which is like insane for Spain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, we cannot think about But Spanish prices like, We here. are not comparing. We are not comparing. Yeah, it's a it's different crazy. stuff. Um, so we are talking about how much a coffee? 20, 25 is what it is? Let's say it's like... Yeah, I guess that we can... If we make it average, because remember that we spoke about having like higher products and yeah. lower products. So can you can we say like a serving can be what 35 40? Mm -hmm. Because okay, some people will get the cheaper the cheapest coffee that can be yeah, 25 40, like yeah. 20 40 can be the cheapest coffee. Okay, so the risk is having not enough clients. Yeah. Like we need to to make we can make a, a quick calculation. I'm I'm gonna do it on paper because I'm I'm old school for <laughs> yeah, that. Always with paper. It's yeah, amazing. it's amazing. It's, I think you're the only one person I know that yeah, is. A... It's I I I think better when I'm. <laughs> in paper. So yeah, I think it's kind of like one of these old school stuff that you, yeah, you yeah. Yeah, we 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 can never change about about there, about, there are certain things that about ourselves. No, Just exactly. Like or, Living in the in the era of technology and artificial intelligence. Exactly, right? we have everything digital. We just pop but it's good. It's good. It's your. So let's let's think about that. So we say like probably like the cheapest coffee can be what like 15 swati. Yeah, 15 swati. Yeah. So, but let's say whoever goes there is not everybody's gonna take just one coffee. Maybe it's gonna take one more expensive coffee or one coffee and a piece of cake, yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. So we can say like, for example, let's let's be optimistic and say like a serving, it's 30 swati. Yeah. 30 swati, uh, it's like 8 euros, 9 euros. More or less, yeah. No, so, oh, it's more or less, yeah. I can, I, can, I can tell you. Then, so we have a serving of 30 swati. 
we need to think how many servings do we need yeah. to get to the point in which is economically viable. So we need to start stacking up uh, expenses, right? So we say like the, the rent is going to be 5,000 swati. Yeah. Then we have supplies is going to be at least 2,500 swati, right? Probably taxes, let's say that it's going to be around, uh, this is ballparking, this is an estimation, but we can say that it's going to be at least like 2,000 swati per month in taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Plus, uh, do we calculate, like, imagine that we have a loan for the machinery, uh, with a, a bad scenario. We, have a, we need to pay 500 per month only okay. in machinery. So only machinery, okay. Okay, so let's say that monthly, only in expenses, we have 10,000 swati, okay? Plus, we need to put some money towards business for it to grow, plus the salary, salary. the own salary, like I spoke with Anya and she said like the minimum that she needs is 5,000 swati, that will be like 1,000 euro, uh, plus some money to invest every month, 2,000. Yeah. So, uh, we are talking about we need to make 17,000 swati per month. Wow. So I if know. our serving is 30, we need to make the calculation of uh, 17,000 divided by 30. And I'm going to use the calculator for that to see how many servings we need to have per month. Again, okay. this is all like very, a, a very rough estimation and a starting point. Yeah, because I think it's important to know at least the best scenario. <laughs> exactly. Let's see what happens if it's... Uh, that means that we need to do uh, 570 servings per month. Okay, divided, let's say, um, you open from Monday to Saturday. Yeah. Let's say. Six right? days, so it's 12, 24 days per month. Yeah. Divided so, by 24... It's 23 servings, like let's say 20, let's round up, 25 servings per day. It's really, really, really possible. Really possible. 25 servings. And, and I'm going to give you an example because the other day I was, I was checking it uh -huh. because I was in, the, in this cafe, I told you, and I think in half an hour, it was at least 10, 10, 10 people asking for coffee. Yeah. Okay, so and we they need every day twenty five. That's for sure. Okay, so then we, we have it like it's viable. But the risk is about if we are talking about risk. If the risk is uh, the people who are going to this bar. I told you they are paying twelve, thirteen slotties for a coffee. Yeah, that's why I think. Let's say, for example, like. As an, uh, as an idea, okay? You have the experience, because your philosophy, you want to give the experience. Mm -hmm. It's very important, it's vital for you. Yeah. It's, you can, this is about, yeah. if you don't have this, you die, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's put this situation. But the market is market. I mean, you, mm -hmm. being the small, you're gonna change the market to being a small. Yeah. You have to adapt and you have to innovate once you are there, yeah. okay? Let's say, I'm gonna you do like normal coffee for, I mean, you know, like Americano, uh, macchiato, whatever you want to do mornings mm -hmm. with some cakes, something like that, without experience, this experience, yeah. blah, 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 blah. But then in the evening or let's say after lunch, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do this really high quality and service, blah, blah, yeah, yeah, things. Yeah. But using the same coffee. Yeah, yeah. You just change like the way that you're serving it or the way that you're preparing it. So yeah, yeah. No, like definitely, it's something like like we need to. This this is an estimation, right? It's a starting point, and as you said, probably once that the business starts, it will need to adapt. One strategy as well can be 
using that as a reference point of what you want to get. And in the end, the first month, maybe you need to be a little bit more constricted and you can go a little bit lower with the price and increasing 5% after you already have like a flow of people. Yeah, because at the beginning we have to remember, we have to do discounts, we have to exactly. uh, do agreements with other bakeries, blah, blah. Yeah. So it's increasing also the price. And then you will see, for example, like knowing that you need to do 25 servings per day, like you can calculate it in, in, in money. So basically in money you need to make 750 per day. Working six days per week. So 750 yeah. is lotis. Average. It's lotis. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm so that means that, for example, that, you know, if, if it's, uh, I think that it's, it's, it's doable. I think so, yeah. But there will be bad days and good days. Yeah. But then knowing that you need to make this money, even the first month, you can be adjusting in two weeks like if you see that the price is too much you can lower it okay i think this is a good this is a good uh let's say a good starting point for okay we we have to we have this number yeah 70 uh, 700 750 uh, yeah so this, this is your day. benchmark yeah okay and it can it can change depending the day and depends yeah. the month it can change right yeah, yeah. by the week okay how we can just increase the income mm -hmm. How, what we can do as owners to increase the income is doing the same thing as you were asking, let's say, for with the bakery. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hire, I'm gonna knock on other companies. Yeah. You have some event. It's full of business events here. In, yeah, in yeah. But I, they need coffee. This is one of the, the 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 benefits about having coffee is like. Everyone loves coffee. Yeah, absolutely. And everyone, every, every, everyone needs coffee and wants coffee. Yeah. So why I don't want to go to different events? Yeah, absolutely. A part of, but okay. Now, yes, but remember that we are talking about one person, one person <laughs> working six days yeah. per week. Yeah. So you know, if you go to event, unless you uh, outsource and yeah. you have somebody else doing that. And then you will need to be the viability of this. Mm. But I, it's yeah. it's totally doable. Like for example, if you have selling uh, coffee, selling coffee, yeah. Not only, not yeah. You can actually this is is done a lot in in Krakow. Like not only having the the coffee, but as well like the I mean like the coffee that you prepare, but the bags of coffee and the coffee paraphernalia. You know like yeah. all this. And you can you can have a small shop, digital shop online, yeah. and then or for example doing workshops. Doing that's I think that this is great because that you can do it at the same time or you can close the you can close it you can have like twenty people and for yeah coffee workshops coffee yeah coffee workshops which everyone wants to know I, I think I, that this is a, this is a great idea like a part of the daily income yeah thinking about two or three activities that will get you an extra because that's true like. One thing is the estimation, and the second thing, what happens because suddenly something breaks, you need to fix and it. You, I don't know, you get sick, or you get, you have to, I don't know. It's yeah. always good to have more in, more sources of income. Yeah, diversify a little, bit, even within the same business, but not bet everything to one activity that is selling coffee. Yeah. It can be like selling paraphernalia, selling. Uh, yeah, like I think I, I like the idea of the workshops because again we go back to who is making that. We are talking about the professional barista. Yeah, it's not a random person. I want to open a cafe. It's exactly. professional barista teach you teaches you how to prepare your best coffee. Yeah, or how to uh, differentiate like uh, coffee tasting. Ah, oh, that's amazing. That's super coffee cool. tasting that's can great. be an in the worst case scenario. You can close the bar or do it on a Sunday, the only day that you are not working, <laughs> or, or even like hire somebody for a specific number of hours to take over the bar while you do the, the workshop. Yeah. And okay, that's another business, but I think that it's, it can be viable. Yeah. But or, like, or using friends in the end. Yeah. Uh, when you're starting as well, you can take a friend and say like, okay, I'm going to do three hours of coffee workshop. These three hours, can you please... Yes, take care of the coffees uh, and I will yeah. pay you 
X, Y, Z. Yeah. Okay, it sounds good. It sounds good to me. Let's talk about uh, competitors. Okay. Okay. What's the main? The main thing is kind of like this uh, quick coffee, no? Like let's say to take away coffee. Um, yeah, but uh, this is not. I mean, like it depends on how we see that. Maybe it's not the real competitor because we are aiming for other kind of product consumer, right? People that it's more into a special coffee. I'm gonna put like gourmet cafe. Uh huh. Let's see. Krakow. But I think that there are plenty of. I think that the competitors are like all these Instagramable places. They are selling not only the coffee, but as well, like you go there, you take your picture and you post it on the Instagram. Oh, I'm in this place. Yeah, but also I think one of the best things that she has is that she is the owner. She is the person who is going to be there. Yeah. She is, it's not about like a franchise or, 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 or something that um, you, you're going to have the, the, mm -hmm. the, the good vibes on this person. Yeah. And I think it's kind of like, uh, okay, let's say. Random page, um, the best ten cafes in in Krakow. Okay, okay. Um, like, Let's see what we have there. Okay, all of them have like coffee and food. Um, yeah. To be honest, in all the photos, I see more food than coffee. <laughs> so the cakes are are must. If we yeah. want like breakfast bre and uh, like like. Yeah, the thing is like if we don't want to get kitchen, but uh, we need to have at least like cakes. And cakes and chocolates and stuff, yeah. Yeah, or maybe a way to do a breakfast without a kitchen. But also I think it's really interesting here because um, I was expecting, let's say, more coffee in the main page, let's say, in, as a main ingredient. Yeah. But they, they don't have, they have food instead as a main photo. Yeah. It's to attract clients, I would say. Yeah, yeah. There is one page where it's really interesting. Is uh, I can't remember the page. It was Coffee in Europe or something like that. It's basically a web page mm -hmm. that they can recommend you the kind of like high quality coffee places in Europe. Okay. And I can. It I will can, be like it. Yeah, but we can check that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to check this. One moment. It was like. The problem about like looking for something is like I don't remember what it was. Yeah, yeah. European coffee trip. Yeah, that's it. European coffee trip. I uh, found it. European coffee trip. Mhm. Mm okay, and we can go like to yeah. to different cities. Basically, you have a magazine, city guides, brew guides, awards and stuff. Okay, like, like part thing. of the strategy should be definitely to get into these kind of places, yeah. into this kind of because web I'm pages. sure this is not the only one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only you, you see barista stories and everything. Yeah, it's kind of like that's amazing. Promotion you see, like um, like I re it recommended me one uh, Spanish guy also. Oh, nice. I, I met him on a, on a um, I think it was an event, on a, uh -huh. a startup event in Krakow. Cool. And um, I saw his name. It was like a Jordi. He was like you're not you're, you're Polish. Not Polish <laughs> you're not Polish. You're not Polish. And uh, he t I, I met him in different places in different cafes uh -huh. actually. Uh, randomly, and he told me if you want, if you're interested in coffees, there is this okay. coffee, nice. coffee, coffee nice. website that you can have. Uh, and so I think it would be like you must. Yeah, we must, we, have your profile here. She she must find a way to get herself into these kind of pages. It's yeah. part of the strategy. Uh, but yeah, like this is the problem. Like okay, it, I think that it's compatible because while you are in the bar, there will be like peak hours and other time that you're gonna be not doing much and this time this idle time it should be for promotion yeah like basically. while you don't have clients because let's face it like i guess that a, a coffee place will have like two or three peaks in the day yeah and then more like people coming and going so in that that moment she will be needed so on that. Uh, competition i will say you don't have this business doesn't have a lot of Directly competition. You have an indirect competition. Yeah. Right? Let's say like a coffee places and everything, uh, because the center is full of uh, of uh, of coffee places. Yeah. Right. I mean, um, I I don't want to say any brands, but just yeah, you know, yeah we, totally. we know we know like which ones are, um, and I think it's kind of like 
you also you can I think it's important to know really really good competitors that you have as a business owner mm -hmm. just to try to learn from this yeah try to find your differentiation point yeah yeah right don't you think just like it's kind of like it's something that is so easy to find competitors online yeah that the good thing is like coffee is something that you know it's a very wide market so you know like a coffee place it's it's nothing like like you are from one or the other that somebody that likes coffee will go to one place and the other place at the same time right so i guess that that it's not that that difficult to compete in this market if you have the right prices and the right product i think that in krakow at least there is a lot of people that will go i think so yeah yeah well the, okay let's talk about like we have competitors which is like it's very important and now we, we cannot see all the competitors obviously because it has a big yeah. like, the market analysis should be like longer yeah. than only one uh, 50 minutes or yeah that. totally but let's say that you have like uh, not direct competitors i think it's a really interesting point to know what you have because also you can choose the place where you can open this yeah. place knowing the competitors around as well yeah okay this can be a, uh, a bad thing of the center definitely if you go to center you are one amongst many coffee places mm -hmm. if you go to an emerging neighborhood you are th there are not that much options and if you are you are cool you are gonna be much more noticeable yeah so everybody's going to talk about that because for example in, in in neighborhoods that are a little bit far away from the center there are like three four cafes so if you open everybody's going to be like oh there are a new cafe in center probably you will need to fight a little bit more to get this status of somebody speaking about you yeah but also but also the movement is is higher actually the movement of business open and closing yeah. in the center is higher right yeah, like yeah. you can host, you you will have more opportunities to find the space i would say in the center yeah because i like mm. so this this is something like it, it will require like deeper analysis i think that the idea of going to the center is still like a good idea i think so yeah. if uh, come the day she can afford it if not yeah. if because it, it's, it's it can be like an economical struggle maybe she will need to think about going somewhere else to save like two thousand twenty per month in renting the place um when do you think i'll say let's say for example like uh, um what about the operations Let, let's talk about operations because this is your field right mm -hmm. i mean this let's talk about operations it, i think is an important even if it's small you think yeah it's quite important. The, the thing is like when it comes to operation with this kind of business i think that we have done the most important that is the budgeting and the target because we have a the, the important thing is to have your benchmarks and we have like the expenses and we have the number of how much we need to make and how much we want to make. And we have a kind of like a target on a daily basis that will help you understand if you need to push more or maybe you are too, too cheap or maybe you are very expensive. So this is the first part because in the end, when it comes to the operational part, being only one person, that's very simple. You're gonna do everything. Yeah. So you will need to organize yourself, you will need to call suppliers, you will need to take care of the place and so on. So this is a very personal matter because you will need a lot of self-organization skills because you will need to do all that stuff at the same time and you will need to find the place. So the place that you, I mean like the, what I mean with the place is the, the time during the day to do all that stuff. but. To, to kick off, I think that the more, most important part about the operation is the budgeting thing that we have done. Mm -hmm. Because this is what it's, it's going to give you the, the reference point. You know, if you are in the middle of the month and you are not selling enough, you know what is your target, you, need, you know what you need to make, and then you need to think, okay, I'm not going to get there, I need to start thinking more. Or if you are making really a lot of money, then you can start thinking how to redirect this money, for example, to reinvest, yeah. buy better machines so you can offer better money or save it so in to one open year a new one, for example in yeah. one year you can move to a bigger place yeah. or even like franchise it or hire somebody 
That's... And then move it uh, totally to uh, you do event and somebody else takes care of the coffee. Yeah. Yeah, that's really in franchising. Franchising, I guess, is like, uh, I don't know how it's legally here in Poland, but I think it's kind of like, it's a really big step, I would yeah. say, franchising. Uh, I mean, it, it, economically, I mean. Yeah, I think. but I mean, like, if, if you don't think about franchising in a in a very big way, but what I mean is like, I'm just going to open another cafe and hire somebody, teach him or her how to do it. Yeah. And even like, you can even... You can do a combo and open your own school of baristas. Get, oh, that would be super get cool. uh, some people, get two or three like baristas, like people that is studying to be a barista or practicing. And then once that they get their their certification or their skills, just offer them a job. If you have this money, say like, I'm going to open, you project the same, you know what are your expenses. You project new expenses and new expenses. You see how much you have saved. You know that a new place is going to cost you like, yeah, you know, say like 20,000 per month, yeah. including the salary of the new person. It's going to be more expensive because when you're talking about your own salary, probably the, the way that it works with the security, like social security, probably is different. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, because also, I mean, we we insist on saying that just like we are in. This is only yeah. an estimation. It's an estimation, It's an estimation. We, uh, because we don't have enough time and information. Also, the perfect scenario will be like the person being here. Yeah. So we, it, but it will be like in uh, the, the, the perfect, the perfect, oh. the perfect situation. Let, let's say that. in a in a real consult, like let's say if somebody will come and hire us to do a consult, that will take. A lot of days we will go through all the numbers, all the steps, and not only uh, we will go with the, with our lawyer as well to see all the the tax uh, consequences and so on. So right now in this podcast, the only thing that we can do is make estimations to help you if you have like this kind of business in mind. This should be like good for you to to have like a lot of starting points and maybe yeah. take it to. If you decide to hire somebody to help you, at least you know where to go. Uh, or if you want to do it your own, you will have a lot of information to start. Yeah, and, and I think it's also important to know at least, oh, it's possible. Exactly. And it's it's a really valuable information, I yeah. think. I mean, okay, I have I have similar idea to do or to, yeah. to have this. Or very, very like very different, but in a different field. But at least you know that it's possible. I think this is very valuable. And this is the, the main reason of this podcast. Yeah, yeah. That, exactly. That's the main reason. But it, it's good that, that you mentioned that, that this is not a, a, what like what we speak here is not the final and we don't have all the numbers. This will require a, a deeper an analysis. But it's a, a very good starting point. Yeah, I, think I think that think it can so. be very useful for a lot of people. So I think the future plans about what you were talking about this, let's say, um, it's not in the first year, I will say. No, no, no. This is a, this is in the in the case, the, the franchising. The future, future plan. Future franchising. It's, let's say, if you see that the business is making more money than you expect, because as you said, like in the end, 25 servings per day, it's not... It's really, really, it's really easy to achieve. So, but this is the minimum that we need to do to just to cover keep, keep running. Give you the, so, yeah, yeah. if you do double everything, because the expenses are going to be fixed, but if you sell double, that means that all the benefit goes to your pocket. Mm -hmm. Now, it depends on how the the owner wants to play with that. If the smart thing would be, in my opinion, to reinvest to make it bigger and keep this wheel going. But maybe you just want to say like, okay, I want this coffee to be like this and then get more money to the pocket. Fair mm, enough. Yeah. But it's also that our advice will be like reinvest yeah. Yeah. cleverly. And just, But yeah. even, even if you don't want to open another place, if you're making this amount of money, you, probably you will want to hire somebody like to not be like six days per week. 
Yeah, maybe in maybe the cafeteria. Five, <laughs> maybe exactly, five. or like, like Saturday is not opening. Being yeah. being like uh, or opening less days. You know, there are like many things that that you can do once. Yeah, that because also more money. the expenses will increase if you have more money. The expenses will increase also because you will have uh, alcohol license, let's say, as well. Like you will have more more things to buy, more like, like more coffee to buy, more yeah. supplies, exactly. more stuff. So, but also is always keep an eye on compensating expenses and the income that you have. Yep. I think that's that's a really like I, I, this is I don't know maybe we are we're a little bit more conservative, but I think in a business like this, I think it's very very important. To but it's it's better to be conservative, and then if things goes well, you have this surprise always project from uh, like above. Like imagine that your expenses are going to be higher. And then, if you have more benefit, that's only good. So yeah, I think so. Okay, um, it's okay. I mean, uh, the only thing about like um, let, let's let's talk about. I think the last thing will be mm -hmm. like about um, how to focus social media and how okay, to yeah, focus. Okay, content. Yeah, how to focus the content. Okay. How to focus the. So this is pretty much your field. So, <laughs> what do you have in mind? I have in mind that it's very important to choose to choose very carefully what you want to which social media you want to open. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's very because it's a very demanding job. Yeah. Especially if you do it by yourself because you have to be at with clients, with taxes, no. with rent. You with, need to be good at everything. Um if you have a dog, if you have a cat, I don't know, yeah, if you yeah, have yeah, a yeah. partner, I mean you have you need I mean, you, you have a life also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's important to understand in the mental health for, uh, or for a business owner that you have a life. Yeah. That, mm, but also you have a responsibility in the job. So I think it's very, very crucial to choose very well the, the, the social media you have to yeah. do. And I think in my, in my, in my opinion, will be Instagram will be like the best, the best social yeah. media that you can have. And Facebook, because... Probably with this system that we have now, yeah. you everything that you post in one social media, you can directly post it in Facebook or uh, vice versa. Yeah, so in the end, it doesn't require like two efforts, but with one effort, you cover both Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, exactly. Right. And Google, Google Business. Google Business, please. Yeah. Use it. Use okay. it. <laughs> it's for free. Nobody uses it. Nobody uses Google. There, nobody spends time in Google. And it's very valuable, honestly. And it's free. Okay. And what can you do in Google Business? So in Google Business is you can have reviews, okay. which is really important for you to grow. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you want to do it locally. I think it's really, really important to know because I, I do it every time. If I uh -huh. go to a place, yeah, same. I see the reviews. Same. And I prefer, like, it's really incredible, but I prefer to see um, 4.5, but 2,000 reviews. Yes. Yes. Then five and one review. Like or twenty. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I do the same. I think that, that most of the people do this. Like when you see many reviews, like you usually place like two thousand reviews and the, the, the note is like above four, still it's, yeah, you, it's you know like yeah. It's it's, it's it's very good. But obviously you, you you need time, right? You need time to have this 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 the the reputation, yeah. yeah, obviously. But especially if you want to focus on the service, on the experience, it's very important yeah. to, to invest time on replying, replying clients uh -huh. on social on Google. On Google and, and Instagram if you have update anything. Update all the photos, update all the information of business in Google. Yeah. Uh, times normally Google reminds you every time you have a, like a local holidays or something like that to, to update, update yeah. your 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 schedule for this for this. Uh, uh, be uh, careful with that, just yeah. because people people use Google a lot. Of course, yeah. This is all not, not not only Google, but also Bing and all the other yeah. other um, uh, browsers and search yeah. engines. But still, it's Google is the biggest, right? Absolutely. And do you think that for this kind of business, a web page will be worth it, or maybe with the Instagram and Google, it will be like enough? Mm, for the beginning, it's better yeah. not to have because it's a really it's, it's not really expensive, but it's it's, it's going to be delayed in time. Yeah. It's going to have more cost, additional cost that is not necessary, and it's not going to bring much value. No, okay, not really. And, and what about the, for example, you said Instagram? What kind of frequency of posting or what should 
any other. It depends. It depends the time that you want to do. Uh, it depends on the time that you want to spend on the social media. Mm -hmm. But normally, I will say like um, two posts every week. Mm -hmm. Two, three, three. Let's say three. Three, three posts, posts per week and reels. I mean, also and one reel or one story, and especially if you want to gain people and visibility, it's, be it's better to use reels and stories yeah. because they're gonna increase your views and it's gonna give you more. But also, I think is better to you have to sell yourself as as a, as a as a owner as a person. Mm -hmm. You have to see. They have to see you. They have to see your face and maybe like explaining things about coffee explaining or like things. saying this week we have this special coffee from Madagascar, whatever. Exactly. And just being a little bit creative or just having some experiences on other coffee places and you can imitate, not copy, but imitate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit like the ideas and everything. And then you can grow with that. Awesome. Yeah, totally. Agree. Like reels. Three posts per week, and, and then, yeah, and just grow with that, and just having, especially updating, yeah. updating all the time. It's a, it's a lot of work because it's for a lot a, of work. it's it takes because in the end, if you want to make money at the beginning to be able to kick off, you need to be like every 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 person. You are the the supplier manager, you are the man in the the person that serves the coffee, you are the social media manager. Uh, it's uh, but I guess like. The good thing is like probably in if the business goes well in six to ten months probably you will be able to hire somebody yeah uh, I think so part time to help you or outsource social media for example or you know like when, once that you start like getting on your feet and you see that you have your targets and you are uh, you know, surpassing your your targets, and you have some money, then you can reinvest not only in growing the business, but as well to make it more comfortable for you. Because this is what you said as well. Like, if your mental state is not good, because you you probably you will be able to work ten hours per day, six days a week for two three months at the beginning when you are like all excited and, and what's not. But at some point, you will need yeah. to outsource or to hire somebody part-time or something like that totally because at the end it's gonna be like some and you want to you want to put all the all the all the tasks and everything at the maximum level yeah but at some point at some point it's gonna fail one of them yeah yeah and it's better to spend i mean i don't know we we are offering a social media manager in in, in placebo paradox mm -hmm. and it's not really like that expensive yeah i would say like but it's it, it gonna like it's gonna save you time and to do what, what 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 you want to do is basically running a business not running a social media exactly exactly okay do we need to anything else or i think that we have the case i think we have the case not closed I not, closed, say not closed but, but uh, at least started right at least she knows a little bit more about what uh, is i don't know different options i would say cool this is, I mean, this is not the, the, the I would say, the, the, uh, the solution for everything, but it's like, it's a beginning, it's something, I think is, we, we, we talk about this yeah. many times about like, and business is constantly upgrading, constantly checking, constantly. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a long run. Absolutely. Say. Okay. Okay, so from here, we, the only thing that is left is to wishing Anya, like, a lot of good luck. We will accompany her in her trip. And, uh, and thank you. Thank, thank you for you for, uh, for being there. Yeah, uh, we will we will opening a new case next week, and let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay, see you. Bye. See you. Bye bye.